everyone. Welcome to another Creative Connections interview. Today we have our friend Brendan, who both of us went to school with at some point. Brendan is currently at the Berkeley College of Music and he's studying film scoring and music composition and he also plays cello. Brendan, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we're so excited to ask you some questions. So we're just going to go ahead and dive into it. Our first question is, can you give us a 30 second overview about you? All right. Well, I'm Brendan and I play cello and I'm from South Carolina, but I'm currently living in Boston. I mean, I'm very driven by my passion for both film and music. And I've sort of taken both areas and found film scoring and music composition at Berkeley. So I'm really happy with what I'm doing right now. Why Berkeley? Honestly, because of film scoring. So the not many, um, not many colleges, especially in the United States, have film scoring as kind of like an undergraduate um, program, and Berkeley does. So because of the reputation of the school and the fact that they've had this program for like many, many years, and they've had so many successful graduates of the program, like um, Romain Javadi, who did Game of Thrones, um, so and Alan Silvestri, um, just so many people. So I guess I, I guess I came here because I knew that I would be receiving um, an education that was going to get me where I want to go. Yeah. A lot of times, um, I've heard college compared to an investment. So you have to think about like what type of investment, like you're investing in yourself mm. and like, what are you going to get out of that investment? And I feel like for you, from what I know, you've made like a really good investment in yourself by doing this program and you're just very talented too. And it's a great, great fit for you from what we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's great. And the people, the people here too are like, and that's anywhere you go, you find like interesting people. Being able to um just kind of like walk outside and ever like everyone here is always so welcoming to new like musical ideas and everyone wants to collab and everyone wants to work together. So it's it's a really great community up here. That's awesome. So talking a little bit more about community, you've had a I would say a pretty challenging start to college because Berkeley did not have students on campus this past semester. So you were at home doing e-learning. I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit and then also compare it to your experience of being on campus for the first time this semester. Yeah, so it was hard having the first semester be on the remote. Um, There was a lot of like, a lot of days where it was like kind of hard to like get the work done, but I, I guess I just, I always like tried to look forward to knowing that I would be on campus and I also took it as an opportunity to kind of get ahead I I reached out to other people that were going to be on campus I reached out to people that were in like my online classes and we talked and now that I'm on campus I've been connecting with people and the whole remote aspect of learning even though it is challenging it's it's not something that I think is awful because I've I just think of all of the collaboration online that's been happening. I mean, that like never in my mind would like, or in anyone's mind, like think about the world a year ago today, there was barely any like collaboration like with people that you weren't there in person with. And now we can record and like do, make music with people all across the world. So while the first semester being online was kind of a struggle, like there have been so many more like things like bigger than me that I've been able to be a part of that's just like can't do it anywhere else except for online. So you, you're in Boston now which is really exciting um, and I, we're so glad that you get to be there for that in-person experience um, while still being safe of course and we were wondering what are some of the differences between Boston and South Carolina that have surprised you the most? People actually are not as friendly up here. If I'm being honest, like um, I don't know. I like I like to say hi to people um every now and then. It's more of people people in Boston seem to be in their own little bubble more. I do I do miss that kind of feeling of the South, you know, just saying hi to everyone that you pass. But um, other than that, very um, very safe COVID wise. We are tested twice a week. Um, I I barely see anyone's face. I've only seen like my roommate's face and a few select people. So everyone's very adamant about wearing masks, which is great. Um, our actually our campus like positivity rate is like zero point one four percent. So doing a pretty good job about that. Um, I miss the food of the South. There are not many Southern places up here. I would like just a meet and three. I guess I miss like just 
people from the South. It was hard coming to a new city, especially during a pandemic. But I, yeah, I guess the familiarity of the South. Yeah, that's a big change because you've been in the South for most of your life, right? Yeah. And I mean, it's it's great up here, though. Uh, the one thing I do love is the cold weather because y'all know I don't I'm not one for the heat. Oh, so it yeah. snowed a little bit this morning. It was really nice. But then it turned to rain. So <laughs> I, I'm glad that there's there's some some good aspects, but there's also acknowledging that that's a big change for you and for anybody that's that's going hugely out of their comfort zone. Um, but you're Takes willing. Courage. Yeah. And like the fact yeah. that you're willing to do it because you're getting such a good education um, shows that you're really passionate about what you're doing. Um, and that's really admirable. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit more about your majors, what motivated you to go into film scoring and music composition? Well, I guess it started when I saw Finding Nemo in 2003. <laughs> I, that, that just really, I think that was like, that's, if, if it wasn't my first movie I saw in theaters, that to my knowledge, it's like the earliest one I can remember. You and before to that movie, just like, stuck in my like three-year-old mind and I would like go home and play it play it on the piano just listening to what I heard and I just like I mean Thomas Newman is awesome but like because the way his music just stuck with me like in it like it really just like stuck with me like there, there's no I can't like put it into any other words other than like stuck with me because it just has been ever since that like a part of me and I was like wow you know what maybe one day I'd like to do something like that and that idea just like kept going and growing and here I am at Berkeley, I guess. Um, a lot of encouragement from teachers along the way definitely pushed me here. If it wasn't for any of my middle school, high school orchestra conductors, any any teacher ever, I would not be here. So with my passion, I definitely got here thanks to so many other people. That's so cool. Oh, that's so good. Like I can, I can totally advocate before the pandemic hit, I was in a string quartet that was supposed to perform one of Brendan's pieces and his music is just the coolest music like I've ever played. I so much enjoyed that. I really wish we could have actually performed it, but I've heard some of Brendan's compositions and they are so interesting. Like to anybody who's watching, you should really look out for him in the future because he's, he's going places for sure. Mm -hmm. It's, we talk about that a lot. We're like, we're gonna be watching a movie one day and the credits are gonna go around. <laughs> Brendan Nero is gonna be right there, loud and proud. All right, switching gears a little bit. So you are a cellist with a part of the cello squad. How has your focus on cello changed now that your primary major is composition? You know, it hasn't actually that much, I would say. I, I've actually kept up my practice routine actually and added to it because I still I still take lessons here um, once a week. I guess I just have added more film scoring to my schedule because I actually like enjoy playing cello a lot. So I go to the practice room like every day for a couple of hours and just grind out. No, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I honestly, honestly think I didn't do a great job of practicing so much um, in high school, so if, if it's one thing, I I, def, I think I'm actually playing cello a little bit more than I used to. I, and I don't know whether it's because I'm in a new place and I have like a newfound passion for just like the cello, but um, I don't know. I just like being at Berkeley has like kind of inspired me to like take ev like every single like, at, like no matter if it's like what I'm going to do or if it's just like something I'm doing in the moment, like it's, it's Berkeley's kind of like made me realize that everything I need to do, I need to like put my best work into it. So I've I've totally just like had a reevaluation of my old life before I was here and I've just started like working, I guess. I used to I used to let myself get away with slacking and I don't know, just decided to change. But I'm it's I, I wish I had done it early. No, I wish I had done it earlier. Like I don't know what I was doing. Like now that I'm like it's it's what I love to do, and every time I do it, I get better at it. So why am I not doing more of it? Wow, I mean, Words what else? Uh, yeah, again, <laughs> what are we supposed to say after that? So obviously, you're succeeding. You're doing a great job from what you just said. You're putting in so much effort, but I imagine there's still been challenges that you face. And I was wondering what has been the most challenging aspect of being at Berkeley so far. Still, the online classes. I mean, it it just um. <laughs> It's, it's kind of situational, you know, depending on the class and how 
how I learn that certain material and how that professor is teaching it to me. So there are still a couple of classes that are very difficult to like learn online, but I guess obviously like practicing and like doing more of that, I try to like work it out. It's not impossible to learn online. It is hard, especially like harmony. That's that, that harmony class is like kind of a struggle for me right now. Other than that, I guess, me, I would say meeting people, but mm -hmm. you just kind of kind of say hi to everyone you pass. And that's how I usually meet people here. Yeah. During a pandemic, it is hard, but you know, <laughs> we all know. On the flip side of that, what do you think has been like the most rewarding aspect of being at Berkeley? Being in a new place, I think. I haven't really been homesick yet. Like, like I have and I haven't, but I, I'm so fortunate to be able to be in a totally new environment where people think like not the same way as where they did in South Carolina. Like there are many new ideas that are just surrounding me and they're all like intertwined in the city. And I've just kind of been using my time to like on the weekends and stuff when I have free time, I kind of go out in the city and just like sightsee and look around and stuff. And yeah, it's it's different. And I, but I like that. I like the I like the difference. That's awesome. So unfortunately, I'd love to keep talking about these, but we have to move to rapid fire. Are you okay. ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Top three favorite movies. Top three favorite movies. The Piano, um, The Cider House Rules, Interstellar. Okay. Do you have any big predictions for the upcoming Oscars? <sighs> Chloe Zalber win an award for Nomadland because I saw it and it was like, oh, it was, I like, I got the movie. Like some people, some people thought it was a little bit boring, but I, I got it. It was, it was, a, it was a great movie. If you guys haven't seen it, it's on Hulu, I think. Favorite sticker on your cello case? Um, my sticker of Miranda Cosgrove leaning against a rainbow and a sun with the words, <laughs> believe in yourself under it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Favorite film score? Finding Nemo, mm. Thomas Newman. Go to meal in Boston. Go to meal in Boston. Uh, I get a Wendy's biggie bag quite often because it's <laughs> just across the street. <laughs> okay, and we have one last question. What advice would you give to your younger self, Brendan? I think I would say um, just keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, and honestly, do more of what you're doing. I I think no, I don't think I know. As a as a child, you know, I was always timid or like embarrassed even to like kind of be interested in what I was interested in you know I just it felt it felt weird I would I would tell myself no that's like that's literally what makes you like epic you know yeah I get I guess like I wasn't thinking about like eight or ten years ago like where I would actually like get wow this is like weirdly emotional like <laughs> um I wasn't I guess I wasn't like thinking too much about like music and it being where I would want to go with life but I would say just keep doing what you're doing, do more of it, uh, be passionate about it, you know. Well, thank you so much again for spending some time with us today. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you today and always. And if you haven't already, to our viewers, go and check out Brendan's Day in the Life. You'll get to follow him along as he goes to his lesson, goes and practices, does fun things like that. And also, if you're enjoying this content, feel free to go check out the other videos and feel free to give us a like on this video and to subscribe to our channel to keep getting awesome content. Have a great day and we'll see all of you later. Bye. Bye.